This is a hold-up. You're wasting your time. I'm a doctor. I don't get paid in cash very often. You from Cimarron City? Yes. Get on out of that buggy. Oh, see here. Now maybe you'll listen better. I just got word that the deputy sheriff from Cimarron City has got my kid brother. He's taking him to jail. But I want him back by sundown tomorrow. If I don't, I'll see to it that your whole town is burned to the ground. You got that? Sundown tomorrow, or we burn the town down. Now start walking. Walking? Cimarron City's 25 miles from here. It'll take me all night. Yeah, you better hurry. That deputy ought to be riding in there about now. Now get! What about my horse and buggy? We'll take good care of it. You... Sergeant Sampson. The sheriff. Dead? How did it happen, Lane? Sam Hart came by this morning and reported a gang of men camped on his place. Hart and I went out to investigate. Before we got there, we ran into this fellow and another man who was dressed in a steer they'd just killed. When they saw us, they went for their guns. This fellow killed Hart. His partner got away. Hart Sampson? It don't seem possible. Now, hold it, hold it. It's the last thing Art Sampson would want you to do. This man will hang, there's no doubt about that. But it'll be done according to law. That's the way Art would want it. That's the way it's going to be. He's right, folks. Get down. Dodie. Take Art's body over to the undertakers and then see to his horse, hmm? All right, Mr. Temple. I don't suppose you want to tell me your name. Sure. They call me Ray. <laughs> Last name? <laughs> well, it doesn't make any difference anyway. We don't have to know a man's name to hang him. You'll never hang me. Well, I want to tell you one thing. I hope your partner tries to stop us. Oh, he will. But he won't be alone. I got a brother ain't gonna like it when he hears about this deputy. And he's got friends. What do you think you're doing? You ain't got no right to lay a hand on me. No, but you had a right to kill Art Sampson, didn't you? You know, you may not be alive when your brother gets here. Ever think about that? Why wait for your brother, Ray? There's the door. Why don't you leave now? So you could shoot me? <laughs> oh, no. You get the idea. Save us a lot of time and trouble. Go ahead. Open the door. Those guns are loaded behind you, Ray. Maybe you can shoot your way out. Go on, grab one. I won't turn around till I hear you cock it. No, thanks. You know, you really are a big man, ain't you, deputy? <laughs> I don't care how many brothers or friends you have. You're not leaving this jail until the judge says he's got a rope ready for you. That's a personal promise. Now, I'm not taking my eyes off of you, not even for Art's funeral.
the world happened to you? Had a fight. Real knocked out, drag out fight. Lost it, too. Well, who'd you fight with? Well, I don't know. They were masks. There were five of them. Oh, real mean devils. Made me walk all the way back to town. From where? Well, I was coming back from delivering the Henshaw baby. They have one every year, you know. <laughs> I was passing this bunch of trees about, oh, 25 miles up the river when this group of hard cases jumped me. And one of them pulled me right down out of the buggy and he just wailed a tar out of me. He told me to tell you, Lane, that if you didn't let his brother out of jail by sundown today, that they were going to come in and burn the town down. Burn the town down? Lane Temple, I want you to do something about this right now. It's a terrible thing when people can't spend one minute without some awful calamity coming upon them. First, those gunmen came here and tried to take all our money, and then that beast, and now we're all going to be burned in our sleep. The world's getting to be a terrible place for a body to raise a family. Now, Mrs. Purdy, nobody's going to burn them around city. They just better not, and you better see to it. Now, I take it easy. Take it easy now. now everything's going to be all right. Go on about your business. There's nothing here that can't be handled. Come on, move along. Doc, you better get yourself fixed up. <laughs> Say, uh, you know a good doctor? Yeah, and I think it prescribes some sleep. <laughs> about 24 hours worth. <laughs> Lane, what are you going to do about this? Well, with Art gone, I... I guess the town council ought to be told about it. Yeah. Doty, go get Martin Kingsley and Jed Fame. All right, I'll get him, Mr. Temple. Come on, Silas. It's the truth if I ever told that not young whippersnapper Lane Temple had the nerve to tell me not to worry. I'm going to tell my husband about it. Burn the town down. A town the size of Cimarron City? <laughs> I'd say that'd take quite a bit of doing. The doc said there were only five of them. However, I uh, don't suppose we can overlook the possibility of they're doing some kind of damage. And that brings up another point. What about a new sheriff, now that Art's gone? Won't be easy to replace a man like Art Sampson. Kept this town clean as a whistle. Made a lot of friends while he's doing it, too. Yep, he was the best lawman I've ever seen. We'll sure miss him. I hate to think of Saturday night in my saloon. Some of those thirsty cowboys get a little too much and I'll have my hands full. Word gets around, we got no sheriff. Every hard case, saddle, tramp, and gambler in the territory will come in on us. Well, Matt will be back in a day or two. We'll take it up then. In the meantime, Lane, maybe you can give us an idea for a good replacement. Having been a deputy yourself, you're in a position to know of a good man. Well, as a matter of fact, I've already given it some thought. Well, as you say, I've been a deputy for Art for quite some time now. I've learned a lot from him. When he's been out of town, for one reason or another, I've taken over the responsibilities of the office. Well, I like this kind of work. And, well, I'd like to ask you to give me the chance. As sheriff? Yes. I think I can do the job. I can handle myself in a fight, and I'm pretty fast with a gun. No offense, Lane. You've made a mighty good deputy. I'll say that for you. But being sheriff is something else again. It takes a man with a lot of experience to know how to handle it. That's true, Lane. Sheriff's job's more than just being good with your fists and fast with a gun. You got to know a lot about human nature. You know, get people to do the right thing without using force. And you've got to admit, Lane, you have made a lot of mistakes when Not was out of town. What do you mean by that? Well, you were seen around town with a couple of pretty girls, and both of them were in cahoots with outlaws. And what happened to those outlaws, in both cases? Well, they got killed. And who shot him? Well, I guess you did. Those the mistakes you've been talking about? It could have turned out a lot different, Lane. You know, your mistake is a weakness for a pretty face. And you've got to admit you do like the girls. Yeah, I sure do. And I suppose my mistake there is being a man, huh? Might get you in serious trouble someday, Lane. Just like it did you, Jed. Married? <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, deputy. If I ain't out of here by sundown, there won't be no town, and they won't need a sheriff. <laughs> All right, gentlemen. Come on, Dodie, let's get back to the livery stable. Hey, uh, you ain't running out on us, are you? Well, of course not, Silas. You get your sheriff, and I'll be his deputy. Whenever he needs me, just like always. That's pretty high-handed, Lane. What do you mean, high-handed? You're the one that brought up the idea of getting someone else for sheriff. All right, go get one. 
Uh, look, you know we can't get somebody at just a minute's notice. You're just taking advantage of the situation. What situation? You all agree that there wasn't any danger of five men burning a place as big as Cimarron City? We didn't say that. That's the way it sounded to me. If you're worried about it, turn your prisoner loose. All he did was kill Art Sampson. Go ahead. The keys are on the desk. Now you're talking sense, deputy. <laughs> no need to get rambunctious. Just two now, side wait a of you minute, on, wait boy. Wait a minute, wait a minute, take it easy. We're all beginning to say things we don't mean that we'll be sorry for later on. Lane, we can't appoint you sheriff. You haven't got the authority without the mayor. But it always seemed perfectly natural to me for a deputy to take over when something happened to the sheriff. Suppose we appoint you acting sheriff. That is, just until Matt gets back. What do you say, Silas? Sounds all right to me. Dead. I suppose so. What do you say to that, Elaine? All right, on one condition. What's that? I have full authority to discharge my duties as I see fit. Well, that sounds fair. Then it's settled. And now what are you going to do about the outlaws, Lane? When I need your help, Jed, I'll call on you. And you probably will. Well, I'd better be getting back to the store before folks carry it off. See you all later. Well, you've taken on a big responsibility, Lane. You know, there's a lot of things in this world worth living for. A few of them worth dying for. Keeping our town a decent place to live in is one of them. Why, I wouldn't like it here if it were any other way. <laughs> and it's your job, boy. We'll all be dependent on you. I'll do the best I can, Mr. Kingsley. I know you will. And if I can be of any help, I guess you know where to find me. Thank you, sir. Oh, Doty? You know if Jesse and Tiny are still in town? I well, know, Mr. Temple. They've gone back to Mr. Rockford's ranch right after the funeral. Well, listen, take my horse and ride out there. Tell Jesse and Tiny I want to talk to him. All right. I'll get started right away. And, Mr. Temple, you be careful while I'm gone. Hey, deputy. What do you want? What time is it? What do you care? You're not going anyplace. Not till sundown, anyway. Hey, if you're looking for a picture of me, you won't find it. You won't find my brother in them files, neither. Ain't neither one of us had a picture taken in our whole life, not one. Ain't it a shame? You won't have the least idea who to look out for now, will you? Why, he might be in this town right now, and you wouldn't know it. <laughs> Guard that prison. Don't let anybody in until I get back. Come on, Danny. Uh, shucks. I want to see the fire. Now, you do like the man says, little fella, and I'll tell you all about it when I get back. <laughs> I wonder how it got started. Probably some gall-earned kid playing with matches. Well, I have a pretty good idea who it might have been. Don't you go accuse my Henry of setting this fire. Well, now, Mrs. Purdy, you know your own son better than anybody. Well, if you ask me, it's as plain as the nose on your face. It was those outlaws that did it. They said they'd set fire to Cimarron City if you didn't let that prisoner out, and they've already started with the school, burning up innocent children. This is not Cimarron City. It's not even the school. It's a back shed. And you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Talk like that could panic the whole town. Yeah. You got something there, Mr. Tibble? Danny, go back and check the office, will you? I'm going to go see Doc. Yes, sir. Just a minute, Lane. Yeah, Jed? I saw you take that note off that pine and read it. So? Well, I want to know what it said. I can't tell you that, Jed. Now, look here. 
If Alice Purdy just happened to be right, and this fire had something to do with that prison you hold him. That would make it official sheriff's business, Jed, and none of yours. Come in. Sorry to wake you up, Doc. I want to talk to you about something. Oh, that's all right, Lane. It's against the rules for doctors to sleep anyway. What's on your mind? Well, those men who beat you up, do you remember anything about them? Anything that would help you identify them? I'm afraid not. Would you recognize their voices again if you heard them? Well, only one of them spoke, you know, and I can't think of anything unusual about his voice that I might remember. I could try, though. Why, what's wrong? Do you think they're in town? Yeah, I do. We want to see you, Lane. Jed Fame. Maybe you'd be happier if I made him a deputy. So he'd know everything that was going on. Well, come in, gentlemen. You're just in time to hear me read the note that was left by the man who started the fire. Well, it's what you came here for, isn't it? Why, that is... Well, uh, Jed said that... That is, well... That's what I figured. This could have been the schoolhouse or any other building in town. But it was just a warning, so you'll know I meant what I told you, Doc, and so you'll know it can be done. We're already in town, but you won't know where until it's too late. Unless you turn my brother loose before sundown. I knew it. Just by the way you've been acting. Now tell me, why were you so all fired secret about this before? Because I don't like your attitude, Jed. I don't like you breathing hot air down my neck all the time like you're hoping I'll make a mistake. Because you better start hoping I don't. There are at least five men in this town that could set an awful lot of fires if I don't find them. Now, since nobody knows what they look like, that's going to take a little doing, and I'm not going to have time to keep you informed of my every move. So why don't you go back to your saloon and keep an eye on it? And like I said before, if I need your help, I'll call for you. Oh, and another thing. I hope nobody gets the idea of turning my prisoner loose as a means of solving this problem because he's staying right where he is until he answers for the killing of Art Sampson. Well done, my boy. Young upstart. Why, I think you gentlemen made an excellent choice for Sheriff. Acting Sheriff, Doc. And just how good a choice it was still remains to be seen. You know, a lot of us here have worked mighty hard and a long time to build up our businesses. And we don't aim to see it all go up in smoke just because some young upstart Gets high and mighty feeling about his new job. Right? Right. Well, if them outlaws are in town, where are they? Yeah, I wonder where they'd be hiding. Yeah, they wouldn't be hiding, little fella. They're just walking around out there in town like anybody else. You don't think they'd really burn the town? Now, shucks, little fella. They ain't nothing to be scared of. Why are you always making out like I'm scared? <laughs> well, boys, we've got a lot to do. And very little time to do it. You just tell us what you want, Mr. Tubble, and we'll get it done. There's at least five outlaws hiding someplace in this town, and we've got to start looking for them. So here's what I want you to do. Though do you stay here and keep a close guard on the prisoner. Tiny Jesse and I will circulate in town. If you see anyone suspicious, you report it to me. Now, from time to time, one of us will drop in on you, Doty. So you grab a shotgun off that rack and keep that front door locked. Don't let anybody in except us. All right, Mr. Temple. Come on. We'll find them, Mr. Temple. I sure like your confidence, Tiny. I take a dollar's worth of this kind. Oh, you must have a lot of kids at home. Nope. Ain't even married. I have an awful crave for candy. Can't seem to get my fill in. With some men, it's liquor. But with me, it's candy. One time, I rode over a hundred miles just to get me some candy. Tried to cut down on it. It's just no use. Well, I reckon everybody's got his weakness, and that's mine. It's terrible, I tell you. I know just how you feel. With me, it's money. Well, <laughs> It sure is nice to meet a man who understands another man's weakness. I'll stop in again next time I'm in Cimarron City. You do that, and if you buy in quantity, I'll work out a discount. Well, uh, that's mighty nice of you. Hey, mister. I want you to come to the office with me for a minute. But, uh, 
Why? Have I done something wrong? Maybe not. If you haven't, I'll turn you loose. the store this fellow was already there and awaiting he had plenty of time to plant this note what about it mister ever see that before well, I don't know what you're talking about I haven't done nothing read it out loud another fire could have been started here Turn the prisoner loose. I didn't write this. I don't know nothing about it, honest. Come on out, Doc. What do you think? I don't remember the eyes. And I can't honestly say I've ever heard his voice before. I'm sorry, Lane, but I told you it wouldn't be any use. Yeah. I think you ought to put him in jail anyway, just in case. I can't do that, Silas, not without a charge. I can't just round up every stranger in town and put him in jail for no cause. We have a lot of travelers coming through here, being on the road to Tulsa. The jail wouldn't begin to hold them all. All right, mister, you can go. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Oh, don't forget our agreement about that candy, huh? Uh, uh... Say, uh... A horse through a shoe. Can you put one on for me? Sure. How long will it take? Oh, about half an hour, more or less. I appreciate it to get right on it. I'm in kind of a hurry. I got me a job on a ranch about 50 miles north of here, and I'm supposed to be there by tomorrow. Reckon I'm going to have to ride all night to make it. Yeah, I'll get them ready as soon as I can. Thank you. Howdy. Don't suppose you could tell me where a fella could... Pick up a bite to eat around here, could you? Why, well, sure. Saloon's around the corner up there. They can fix you up. Uh, good. Thank you. Uh, hello, lovey. Don't lovey me. Have you sent for the troops? No, honey. You know that it's too late for that. Oh, that's just like you, Bert Purdy. You'll sit here and fiddle around while Cimarron City burns. No, Alice. Why don't you let the proper authorities handle this? For authorities, Matt Rockford's out of town, not Samson, God rest his soul, is dead. Who's to protect us? Well, I'm sure that Lane... Lane Temple's no more than a boy, and you know it. What can he do? No, Alice. See, I just have to go home and protect my family as best I can by myself. Well, what do you want me to do, sweetie? Oh, nothing. <laughs> One of those telegrams. Sure. Here. Put the name and address of the person you're sending it to right up here at the top, and then write your message here in the middle and sign your name at the bottom. You go out and get some fresh air, Dodie, and relax a little. I'll take over for you. Well, all right. But you be sure and keep that door locked, just like Mr. Temple said. Now, don't you worry yourself none, old buddy. I'll look after things in here for you. Hey! What do you want? Come here a minute. I want to talk to you. What's your name, Buddinger? How'd you know that? Well, anybody that ever done any bounty hunting seen plenty of wanted posters on the Buddinger gang. 
That's so. Is that what you do? Used to. You're kind of on the wrong side of these bars, ain't you? For a budding there. Maybe. Maybe not. What you doing in this town, anyway? Hiding out? Maybe. Maybe not. Well, it doesn't matter. I bet you wouldn't be against picking up some fast money, would you? What you got in mind? Well, you open a cell door and let me out of here, and it's worth $5,000 to you. Hey, that's sure a bunch of money. We pulled off a big payroll job up north of ways. My share was 5000 Now, you just open up this little old door here and let me out, and it's all yours. Maybe I can even get my brother to take you in with us. We got big plans. I don't know. How do I know I can trust you? I'll shake on it. I was hoping you would. You're as bad as them brothers of mine. You just can't understand that being a button guy don't make me no idol. Blaine, we're looking for you. I don't suppose there's any sense in asking if you caught the outlaws, because these say you haven't. What are they? Warnings, just like the one I found in my store. Six of them. And everyone saying a fire could have been started where they were found. Where were they found? One in the storeroom back of my place, one at the Sentinel office, and one at the drugstore. I found one in the stage depot. I told you you should have called for the troops. One in the alley behind the barber shop. We even found one in your own livery stable. How do you like that? I don't like it any better than the rest of you. Well, why aren't you doing something about it? We're doing all we can. The boys and I are checking every stranger we see. What way have you got to know that you haven't already talked to some of them and then turn them loose? No way for sure, Jed. What do you expect out of me, some miracle mind reading? I expect you to do what you get paid for. Protect this town! You can turn that man loose. He's staying right where he is. I know how you feel about that, Lane. But there are other things to consider, too. Getting our stores and buildings burnt down won't bring Art Sampson back. What kind of people are you, anyway, that you can forget so quick what I did for you in this town? The times he's risked his life for you. The trouble he saved you by keeping this a clean place to live. He didn't do it by turning killers loose to kill again. And I'm not doing it either. Now, if you people want to do something besides criticize me, you can help yourselves a little by being ready to fight these fires if they do come. Start those pumps working. Fill every barrel and bucket you can find. Line the streets with them. You've got two hours until the sun sets. He sure likes to give orders, doesn't he? Huh. What he said makes sense, though, about being ready. I told you, Lane, we'd take care of things. He you knows just what to do. Call oil, ready. Where is it? The one place I won't look. Behind the schoolhouse where there's already been a fire. I'll tell the boys. I'll start the first fire at the livery stable. That'll be a signal for the others. When this town sees their whole town ablaze, that sheriff won't have a chance of holding my brother. I've never been here before. What are you doing here? Well, mostly I've been drinking. What are you hiding inside your coat? Just a little more drinking material, that's all. <laughs> Every time I ever saw a man get drunk on coal oil, he reaps it. There's one of them you can stop worrying about. Maybe so, but it proves something too. It proves I ain't kidding. Writing notes was one thing, but toting coal oil is another. Howdy. I'd like to get a gallon of coal oil. Coal? Why, why, sure. The drum's back there in the storeroom. You go on back and fill your can, and I'll be right with you.
playing. One of them's inside. Wants to buy some coal oil. That's him. What are you going to do with the coal oil? Well, my wife needs it for our lanterns and things. Say, what's this all about? You alone? Well, my, my wife and kid are right outside there in the wagon. Come on. Oh, now, wait a minute. I said move. Jim, what are they doing? Silas. Get him his coal oil and try to find some way to tell him we're sorry. Right. What's the matter with you people around here? We got a lot of trouble, mister. You come back with me and I'll get you your coal oil. And say, I'll bet you I can find a bag of candy for that beautiful little girl of yours, too. Now you just come with me. That was a pretty sight, wasn't it? I don't know what got into me. Well, the whole town's that way. Like a powder keg with a short fuse. Yeah. I've been walking up and down the street all day. People I've known since I was a kid won't even talk to me. You ever seen Cimarron City so busy yet so quiet, Doc? Look at them. Standing around little groups, talking. They want you to let the prisoner out, Lane. That'll be the last thing I'll do. Thought I heard a horse down here. Wonder what this is doing here in behind the schoolhouse. Say, that's Doc Hodges' rig. Well, I'll swanee. Expect to catch us. Took them most all day to find that Doc's horse and buggy. Hey, how come Fred left it where they could stumble on it anyway? It don't make no difference. Won't help them none to catch us. See, after we split up, Fred used the buggy to haul these coal oil and bottles out here. Had it all stashed away the night before the Doc ever got back to town. That's why he made him walk. We better hurry up. We haven't got too much time to get these filled up and planted around the town. Yeah. I hope it ain't us that gets planted. Like Harry was. Ah, he didn't use his head. Let the sheriff get too close to him. You ought to know you can smell coal oil a mile away. It. Down there back of the schoolhouse, out of sight, behind some bushes. I wonder why they returned it. Looks like they used it to haul in a supply of coal oil. I just found a couple of bottles hidden in the alley, ready to be used when the time comes. And more than likely, they got it planted all over town. Maybe we can find them and empty them all out. We might be able to find a few, Jesse, but with the time we got left, we wouldn't make a dent in it. Doc? Doc Hodgers, you remember me. I know this man, Lane. He's got a spread about 40 miles west of here. He put me up one night when I was out making my rounds. What's the matter with you people losing your heads like a lynch mob? You're gonna kill this man. I know you're all edgy. That doesn't give you any reason to forget that people have rights. Being a stranger doesn't make a man guilty of anything. Otherwise, I could arrest and hold every new face in this town until this is settled. That'd be the easy way but it'd be going against everything that's making Cimarron City what it is. This is no time for speeches, Lane. And I'm surprised at you, Jed, taking part in a thing like this. 
Or maybe you figure I can't make enough mistakes on my own and you're going to help me out. Is that it? That sun's beginning to set, Lane. And I think it's about time you admitted you are wrong. Listen! Listen! It's not too late yet, Lane. I know how you feel about this, Lane, and I admire your principles. But uh, these people are about to get out of hand. There's no telling how much unexpected damage that could cause. I thought about that, Mr. Kingsley. I've waited through my mind time and time again. How much more time do you think you've got to mull over something that's just as plain as the nose on your face? Yeah. Not much time, Jed. And it's clear to me there's no way to ferret these men out without hurting some innocent people. And there's no doubt in my mind that they'll go through with their threat to fire this town. That's why I'm letting my prisoner out right now. Well, wait a minute. I'm warning you. I'm doing it my own way. Any man who tries to stop me or get in my way is apt to get hurt. What's he doing out there, Mr. Jones? Cody, Jesse, pull down those blinds. Higgins is going to be all right, Lane. They just jarred him up a bit. Oh, good, Doc. I'm glad you came by. You can help us out. Well, sure. What do you want me to do? What's the matter, Sheriff? They giving you a bad time out there? <laughs> Shut up. We'll take care of it right away, Mr. Kimball. Here, Doc. Mr. Barry. Yeah? I've got to see you in your store right away. Well, what for? I'll tell you over there. What's going on now? I don't know what's going on here. What is this about? What are you doing in there, Tempo? What are you stalling around for? Hey, you. Oh, come on out. Well, must be getting pretty close to sundown. Hold out your hands. What for? You're going to turn me loose anyway, ain't you? I don't have time to argue. Doc, ever use a shotgun? Hunting animals. This won't be much different. What do you think you're doing? Shut up! What in place is she doing that for, Lane? You're just wasting time. Just seeing that he doesn't get out of this saddle. Well, what's the difference? You're gonna let him loose anyway. I said I was bringing him outside. I didn't say anything about letting him loose. If you don't let him loose, we will. The first man that touches this horse gets shot. The second, too. <laughs> and probably the third and the fourth, the way this thing scatters. Of course, now, uh, I'm hoping I won't have to shoot. Because I'm the one that's going to have to patch up those of you that live. Now, Dodie, just you wait a minute. But I'm in a hurry, Mr. Perry. It ain't that's so all fired important that it can't wait. I want to see what Lane Temple's up to with the prisoner. He's got a plan, Mr. Perry, and what I'm doing is part of it. I'm on Fisher Sheriff's business. Mm -hmm. All right. What is it you want? Five gallons of coal oil. Coal oil? What? That's what them outlaws need, is coal oil. What in blazes do you want with it? Going to start a fire with it. Fire? What? Has Lane Temple gone plum loco? Fire's what we're trying to stop, not start. I know that, Mr. Perry, but it's part of Mr. Temple's plan to fight fire with fire. Say now, that's pretty good, ain't it? It's an old saying I said there, fight far with far. Well, you've heard that old saying before, ain't you, Mr. Perry? Of course I have. Well, that's what Mr. Temple aims to do. And I reckon I'd better hurry. Well, I don't see any sense in it, but how much did you say you wanted? Five gallons. I suppose you've got the money with you. Well, no, I ain't got any money myself. Then how in tarnation do you expect to buy anything without any money? But, Mr. Perry, this is important. It could help save the town. And what's going to save my business if I'm always giving things away? Every time there's a crisis in this town, everybody always expects me to supply anything that's needed, free. Why, I didn't even get paid for all those bullets I supplied the time we run those bandits out of town. Mr. Perry, we've wasted enough time already. Now, I've got to have that coal oil, and I've got to have it right now. I didn't say you couldn't have it. I just said I wasn't giving it away. Free. But I ain't got any money. Then you'll just have to open the charge account. Here, sign here. Come 
Bye, Doc. Take care of me. All right. You men who want this prisoner, here he is. I'm taking him out of town. So I won't do you any good to set your fire. We're leaving alone. Just the two of us, nobody else. So if you still want him, all you have to do is come and get him. Well, what do you think he is sheriff now? He's got a lot of guts, hasn't he? That remains to be seen what he's up to. Remains to be seen? Use your head, he's forcing those outlaws out into the open. If they want that prisoner, they'll have to show themselves to get him. Lane's making himself a target to save your precious town. We've got to back him up. We can't let him do this alone. It's the only way to work if he's alone. But you can help. Come with me. Silas? I thought you wanted this man! Why don't you come and get him? Fred. Fred! Fred! Stupid fool. You're supposed to be at the alley waiting for my signal. Do you know what's going on out there? Yeah, I got ears. Well, what are we gonna do? Keep your eyes on the back door. Do just what he wants us to do. Follow him out of town. There's no telling where he'll take my brother if we don't stop him. What are you talking about? First one of us tries to ride out of here, be shot down before we can mount up. Not if everybody's busy fighting fires. We can't fire the whole town now, but we can cause enough confusion. Maybe they won't see us leave. Now, you better get back where you belong. Start as many fires as you can in as many places. Then make a run for it. Oh, no. No, it ain't worth it. I don't care whose brother he is. Now, suit yourself, George. But unless you want to stay here and settle down for keeps, you better do it my way. There ain't no other. All right, Fred. I didn't have any cash on me. Meet me over in charge account. Delivery stable! It's on fire! Now stay where you are. Let the others handle it. Fire! Fire at the stable! Fire! Fire! The stable's on fire! Let's 
go. All right, now, where are we going? I told you from the start, you're not going anywhere to try out for the killing of Art Sampson. So far, nothing's happened to change that. Now move. Howdy, Doc. Well? Well, all the fires are out. Sounds like everyone's over at the saloon celebrating. Yes. You going over? Nope. You? Nope. I'm going to get me about 12 hours sleep. It's uh, too bad they couldn't save the livery stable. Yeah. Well, good night, man. Good night, Doc. Here they come, Mr. Temple. They're all coming here, looks like. Reckon what they're going to say, Mr. Temple. I don't think there's much question about what they're going to say, Tiny. Oh, boys. Lane. I'll save you the trouble, Matt. We were going to ask you for it. Lane, as you know, we just had a council meeting. The men brought me up to date on what had happened. About your disagreements with certain council members, the manner in which you conducted yourself in the situation, the resultant fires and so forth. A resolution was introduced and passed. Mr. Kingsley will tell you what it was. Well, Lane, uh, we decided that your courage and integrity in the discharge of your duties resulted in a minimum of destruction in our town and certainly maintained the high standards of this office as set by Art Sampson. So, We'd like you to keep this job permanently. This is the one that aren't war, Lane. Thanks, Matt. I hope I can wear it as well. I'll try. I say, you don't mind me asking, uh, how'd the vote go on this resolution? It was unanimous, Lane. Thanks, Jed. Don't mention it, my boy. I have faith in you all the time. <laughs>